this is it. Years and years of theories and speculation might all be coming to an end this very week. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to say we are here for it. Despite the rather light-hearted beginning to the arc, Egghead seems to be rapidly approaching an end, chock full of tragedy. In quick succession, we got Kuma's backstory, one of the saddest Oda has ever written, Sentomaru sacrificing himself, Kizaru doing a complete character shift, and as of the end of One Piece chapter 1108, Vegapunk appears to have died just as his life's work crumbled around him. But Vegapunk, being the genius that he is, saw this coming a mile away and prepared a surprise I'm certain nobody in Marijuana expected. A dead man's switch has been activated, and the last words of the chapter are as follows. <clears throat> Hello? Check, check. Is this on? Hello out there. Come in, world. <clears throat> I am Dr. Vegapunk, a humble genius scientist. While many of you will likely be shocked by what I have to say in this message, I assure you that it is the truth of this world. Vegapunk is about to spill the beans on the world government's 800-year-long charade. The entire lid on their well-kept secret is about to be blown wide open, and this time, no amount of buster calls will be able to stop the message from reaching the greater public. Speaking of which, this moment reminds me a lot of the speech Clover was giving just before O'Hara was destroyed. The only difference is that now it's not just a bunch of vulnerable scholars who are in the know, now it's potentially the entire world hearing something they're not supposed to and getting caught in the crossfire. And so now, I'm sure a lot of us are asking the same question. What is he going to say? And what are the repercussions? Well, at the risk of overhyping this potentially monumental moment in the story, we're going to talk about it. First, let's figure out the answer to a simpler question. Not what he will say, but how much he will say. We're going to be bringing up Professor Clover a lot in this video, and considering that Clover shares a lot in common with Vegapunk, it's no wonder. A lot of Egghead is a follow-up to O'Hara as a whole. Even Saul is waiting for them on Elbaf, their next destination, bringing everything full circle. As for the content of their speeches, I think this is an important comparison because when Clover was giving his speech, he was there in person and was able to be cut off with a simple gunshot. There was no broadcast leaving the island, so his audience was limited to those on O'Hara, with no one left to ask any questions once they were dead, except Robin, of course. Vegapunk, however, is giving this speech after his death, meaning that their solution of simply shooting the messenger will no longer work. This is a pre-recorded message. Vegapunk himself went to O'Hara. He saw what happened to the scientists, just like himself, when they tried to speak up. And so, he carried on their will and picked up their research where they left off. But most importantly, he learned from their mistakes. Unlike Clover, Vegapunk anticipated the Buster Call. Unlike Clover, Vegapunk kept a low enough profile to prepare for the worst before blowing the whistle. And now, just like with the research of O'Hara itself, he's going to follow Clover's speech to the conclusion it was denied 20 years ago. In other words, Vegapunk will finish what Clover started, and not even death can stop him. He effectively placed the world government in a checkmate, a catch-22. He's either learning what they don't want him to learn, or sharing what they don't want him to share. One or the other. They have to choose, but there's no choice in which they can win. Think about it. If they let him live, he continues to research the forbidden history of the ancient kingdom, and he continues to develop systems and technologies that undermine the world government's power. But if they kill him, he pulls back the curtain on everything he's been researching and shares it with the world, meaning everyone else learns about the truth instead. I find this to be very ironic. Just prior to all this, we had a flashback where Kuma basically negotiated for Bonnie's life with Saturn, and it's phrased as if he made a deal with the devil, Saturn being the devil. He certainly took pride in how genius his own diabolical offer was, believing it to be a win-win, but in actuality, this deal was only made possible through a middleman, 
Vegapunk, who would do all the actual work. He placed a lot of faith in Vegapunk holding up his end of the bargain in both subduing Kuma and creating the Pacifista, both of which Vegapunk secretly programmed to work against Saturn. The Gorosei in general have relied on Vegapunk's work for decades as a means to enhance their power and control, but in reality he was undermining them the entire time. The Gorosei, just like any other self-confident sucker, made a deal with the devil themselves that would later backfire on them. I can't stress this enough. Vegapunk completely outplayed them at every single opportunity. He turned control of the Pacifista over to Bonnie. He didn't follow through completely on killing Kuma. He secretly carried on the work of Ohara. He brought Nika himself onto the island and now is about to broadcast their darkest secrets to everyone. And the Gorosei unknowingly funded this every step of the way. These fucking morons paid money for this. He truly is the smartest man in the world because he's the only person in history to have the world government play into his schemes and not the other way around. Who's the devil now, idiot? And so, this announcement will not be stopped. There is no one left to shoot. The lab is protected by an energy field. There are three more Vegapunks still alive and kicking. The island itself cannot be destroyed yet while Agorosei and Admiral are still there. Steamboat Willie is preventing them from escaping and the broadcast has already begun. What are they going to do? Exactly nothing. They can't do shit. They just have to sit back and enjoy the show. So as far as I can tell, this message is going to go off without a hitch. There will be no interruptions this time, and the audience is the world itself, meaning we are in for a serious lore dump with serious consequences. The next question is, what exactly is he going to say? Well, there are a lot of options, and before I get to those, I want to cover what I think he won't talk about. I don't think Vegapunk will talk about the One Piece treasure, Nika, and the origin of Devil Fruits. As far as I'm concerned, these are the three biggest mysteries apart from the Void Century remaining in the story. Because the first is the MacGuffin for the whole manga, the second is related directly to both Luffy's identity and destiny, and the third is the underlying explanation for the entire power system of the series, if not the source of all power in the One Piece world. It's for these reasons that I can't see Oda answering those mysteries until later on. If all of Vegapunk's research was enough to figure out what the One Piece is, then there'd be no point in anyone actually going there to confirm its existence, since Roger did it already and you could just read the Poneglyphs to piece it all together. Which is to say that I don't think the Poneglyphs themselves speak of the One Piece's identity. The only people who know what it is are the Roger pirates who actually went there. As for Nika, while I think he may be brought up in some part of the explanation for the world government's beginnings, in reference to Joy Boy more specifically, I don't think Vegapunk has enough information on Nika to make any definitive statements. He was almost in disbelief when seeing Gear 5 for the first time. Nika is ultimately still a mythical figure, and outside of the scope of Vegapunk's research, apart from any historical mentions of Joy Boy, like I said. The origins of Devil Fruits are likewise out of the question to me, since Vegapunk, by his own account, has been unable to perfectly replicate all three types of Devil Fruit powers. He has figured out many of their mechanics and how to emulate them to an extent, but most definitely has not cracked the code on their origins. We have never seen Vegapunk invent a totally new power, for example, only copy be existing ones. If he had truly cracked the code on Devil Fruit creation, he should be able to create totally original abilities, but he can't. So what will he reveal? I've narrowed the options down to four major points. I'm not going to get into specifics, but I am going to get into the general premise of what he's going to talk about. Keep in mind we could get all or none of these, but I'm just choosing the topics that would make the most sense. Number one, the reason for the Poneglyphs being made. Number two, the nature of the ancient weapons. Number three, the name of the ancient kingdom. And number four, the existence of Emu. The first two subjects were already discussed at length by Clover, but only we the readers and Robin are privy to what he said since everyone else who heard it was wiped out. Therefore, I think Vegapunk will retread these topics, but from a more nuanced perspective, taking into account all the new research he stuffed into that giant head of his. Why the Poneglyphs were made is critical to share with the world since the Poneglyphs prove their claims almost inherently. By this I mean that if these Poneglyphs made the claim that some ancient enemy destroyed their people and wiped out their history, then the fact that this message was written on indestructible stone, which the modern government prohibits reading, inherently confirms the idea. 
This ties into the nature of the ancient weapons, because while they are vaguely described by the world government as weapons of mass destruction, the Poneglyphs might illuminate their true purpose, and considering this information would be coming from the mouth of the world's biggest weapons manufacturer, people would have little reason to doubt it. Third, we have the name of the ancient kingdom, which once again, Clover seemed to know. And since, quote, the will of O'Hara still lives, we know that Vegapunk knows whatever Clover knew. There's an interesting parallel in a way between Clover and Vegapunk and Roger and Whitebeard. Roger announced the One Piece to the world, but for many years it was thought to be a pipe dream, until Whitebeard confirmed its existence in his dying breath. Clover announced the existence of the Ancient Kingdom, but could not reveal its name, leaving it a mystery until Vegapunk, in his own death, confirms its existence. In other words, I think that this week, Vegapunk is going to finish Clover's sentence. He is going to name drop the Ancient Kingdom. It takes me back to two years ago, when I was first theorizing about the name of the Ancient Kingdom. Back then, I thought it would be called the Kingdom of One Piece, and considering Roger and Clover both announced the One Piece and the Ancient Kingdom respectively, while Whitebeard and presumably Vegapunk confirmed each, then maybe they're all talking about one and the same thing is what I wish I could say. However, since reading this chapter, I've been forced to reconsider my position. I don't think that can be the name anymore because it would be a complete rejection of Luffy's journey from a writing standpoint. Luffy does not want to know what the One Piece is. We know that much from Saba Odi. We don't want to know what the One Piece is until we actually have it in front of us. It wouldn't make sense to announce the kingdom's name here if it actually was One Piece. It would pull the rug out from under the whole adventure. But we are almost certainly getting the name of the kingdom soon, so it can't be One Piece. So what could it be? I don't know. Bingo Bongo is still on the table. Finally, we have Emu's existence, which realistically Vegapunk should have as an ace up his sleeve. I've seen a lot of people suggest that Vegapunk does not know about Emu, but I have trouble believing that Vegapunk would understand enough about history to claim he knows the truth of the world, but somehow be missing the most critical piece of information to that truth, that there is a single figure ruling the world from the shadows. If he somehow missed this or didn't know this, then what he's sharing is in fact not the truth of the world. So, I believe Vegapunk does know about Emu and does plan to reveal that Emu exists. This would be the most damning part of his message. Not only would this put the world government as a structure in jeopardy, but it would reveal them to be liars and conspirators, confirming all the other information Vegapunk is giving out. Because if you had to choose who to trust about, let's say, the ancient weapons, who will it be? The scientists commonly believed to be the smartest man alive researching all this stuff for decades, or the group of slavers who have been hiding a dictator for 800 years? This sort of reveal would cause every allied nation to pull out of the world government alliance because it would become instantly clear to them that they have no real power, that their participation in reveries and their agreements to maintain peace and equality were never real, founded upon a lie, all for the benefit of an actual all-powerful ruler. This information would collapse the system completely and undoubtedly spark worldwide revolution. But more importantly, it would spark something else. A response from this newly unveiled king. Remember, no one is supposed to know about Emu. No one is supposed to know about the Ancient Kingdom. No one is supposed to know about the Poneglyphs. No one is supposed to rebel or disobey. But now, they all know. Now, they are all disobeying. And now, they must be punished. This reveal will be the most important part of his speech, and the most detrimental. In fact, I believe that this entire speech is what gave the name to the Egghead Incident, because this moment, the Egghead Incident, will be the incident that initiates the Great Cleansing. Emu is going to respond by wiping out everyone who knows, everyone who heard, everyone who rebels, and will only spare those who are ignorant or those with noble blood. Emu might believe that no matter how many people have to be killed in order to hide this truth, they can always be repopulated by the Celestial Dragons. It's all too much to fix now, so why not wipe the slate clean? Why not start all over again? Allegiances will be broken. Islands are going to be wiped off the map. People are going to be executed for treason. The Mother Flame is going to be working overtime, and with every use of the flame, remember, the water level is going to increase higher and higher. We are talking 
great fires, cataclysmic floods, and total world restructuring, we are looking at the beginning of a new void century, an attempt to sink the old tainted world beneath the sea, a great cleansing meant to start fresh, all because of Vegapunk's speech. The countdown begins next chapter. This is truly the final saga of One Piece. We are here at the end of the world. Now all that's left is to stop it. Thanks for watching this short dive into the most recent chapter. I couldn't help myself with this one. A lot of my favorite topics in One Piece came to the forefront these last few weeks, and it's pretty surreal to be potentially getting some answers to such long-running questions. Very soon, half the theories on this platform might be completely disproven, including a lot of my own. And I couldn't be more excited. <laughs> no more having to wonder. No more having to speculate. We are finally getting to the payoff. Soon, all the pieces are going to fit into place without having to make any reaches to get there. Egghead, one of the best arcs in the series, is almost over. Elbaf is on the way, and Laughtail is on the horizon at last, and I couldn't be more grateful to share this journey with you guys. It's truly a blessing. Once again, thanks for stopping by the Hidden Island. If you enjoyed your time, please leave a like and subscribe to keep the music alive. I appreciate you watching the show because I sure enjoyed putting it on, and until next time, have a pleasant day, a good night, and a wonderful romance dawn.